All right, hey, Physique peeps. I'm in the kitchen once again. It's been a long time, and uh, it's time to start cooking. It's time to start taking care of the body. It's been six weeks since I've come out of the show. And it's taken, it's taken that long for my body to come back to life, for my body to come back to the motivation to want to cook and take care of the body and feed it right. Whew, I gotta tell you, that was a long, that was a long process and probably more so because, I don't wanna say this, but because of the age and the fact that I took 21 years off and for the last two years, uh, about the same time, this time 2016, is when I started getting ready for my first show that I did, um, you know, the first of four in the last two years. And, um, you know, from the stress of it all, keeping and maintaining a full-on bodybuilding schedule while handling a full-on client load, personal training client load, um, I did it with all I did it with all four shows with the exception of taking a month off um, to do the last show, which which was my first and last, you know, one and done pro show. So we got some neck bones over here, okay? We got some neck bones over here because I'm about to do some uh, neck bones and uh, black beans. You know, it's time to get some healing food in the body so we can get it back to its to its norm weight. Right now it's a little skinny. A little skinny. Um, but you know, it's par for the course. It's par for the course because the body has not been wanting to do anything. It's just been wanting to be left alone and heal and rest. And I'll admit it's it's been hard because I'm I'm, I'm used to moving around, but I'll say with knowledge and wisdom gained over the years, um, I paid attention to it, and it's, it's, it's good to feel that I'm back. It's good to feel that you know my eyes are open and my body actually wants to move around. So that means I'll get back in my uh, stealth shape. Stealth, sleeth, something like that. So I am putting together my chicken soup, which actually equates me baking my chicken. And I'll give you a, I'll give you a show here after I'm done putting all the stuff on it. So I season and bake a whole chicken, and then I put it in, I put it in the vegetables and that's my homemade chicken soup. So and let me get you a, let me get a, a look. See, this is what we have going on here. This is it, okay? All right, where are we at? All right. So, um, and it's also been why I've not been talking on the media. Um, it's, it's been a transformation, if you will. Um, you know, coming out of competitive bodybuilding, knowing that it's, it's, it, it's run its course, it's full circle, it's complete, and I can move on with my life. And for, and for a bodybuilder that comes from back in the day, I wanna say back in the day, started competing in the early 80s, um, it's been a transition, you know? It's, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard. Uh, at one point, you know, I mean, you know, the consciousness goes through all types of, all types of dimensions of thought. And, you know, anywhere from, you know, feeling like a loser, you're skinny, you know, there's nothing left in life, all that stuff. And you just let it go right by because you know it's not the truth. <clears throat> and, this is part of my path. This is part of my journey, you know? 
and I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side of it, I don't have to beat up on Greg anymore. <laughs> okay, so the chicken is dressed. I put, I wrap it up in aluminum foil, heavy duty, and I keep it sealed for like the first hour, hour and a half of baking. That way it stays juicy, moist, tender, and it cooks inside before I, I open up the foil and let it cook on the outside. A lot of noise, sorry about that. Okay. So, and, and I've got the oven preheated. Uh, what is it? It's about 325. Normally, I, I cook it a little slower, but I don't feel like waiting all night for this thing to cook. So I'm actually gonna go 375. New oven, haven't really cooked it in a lot, still still learning the temperature, but that 325 did not feel warm at all. Uh, you know, warm enough. Okay, timer, timer, first hour. Yeah. Okay, so that's done. And where are my veggies? So we'll chop veggies up for the soup, my onion, my carrot, my celery. So getting back to bodybuilding talk, life talk. Um, you know, the mental that comes with all of this is also the mental that you have to deal with when you come out of a show. And coming out of a show, a lot of times it's not easy. And more so if you're coming out of a show and you're not going into another show and nobody knows it's about to get its, its rest or its downtime. Um, you know, there's a lot that the brain goes through. There's a lot that the psychological goes through. There's a lot that the, you know, the consciousness goes through. And sometimes you hit depression. Sometimes you hit depression. Um, <clears throat> my thing, my thing has always been post, you know, Post, uh, post competition to, to be ready to come out and to be on the other side of, of the competition because to me that's one of the most important parts of competing is the post. There's such a buildup going into a show because you basically live by a clock and a calendar. You live from meal to meal, from workout to workout, from cardio session to cardio session. And um, that's life, that's, that's all you do. You know, so there's a massive buildup at the end of all that, and 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 rightly so, you know. Um, but bodybuilding is a little different. Bodybuilding is different because, you know, like I used to tell people a long time ago, being a bodybuilder is like taking care of a newborn baby. I mean, that's the attention that we need to make this body do the thing we want it to do. And. That's what makes us freaks. So, being on the other side of that feels really good. Like I said, it, uh, it took a minute and you know, there, you know, there was a lot of emotional and for me, um, there's also been a clearing of life, a clearing, I wanna say clearing of my soul because there was things that I didn't know were still needing to be uh, released until they came up. And, and, and a lot of that came up during the, the process of you know, the last six weeks getting, from, you know, getting ready for my show. So, you know, upward and onward to the next part of my life and 
you know, I can finally embrace the fact that, and for a long time, I've known this, but never gave it 100% because I was a competitive bodybuilder, that I'm a better coach than I am a competitor. And, you know, it's not, I'm not saying anything bad about me as a competitor, but if I was to be one of the great ones, I, I would have been one of the great ones. And that wasn't my path. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't the plan that was laid out for Greg. You know, the fact that I have been training people since 83, the fact that I've put so many people on stage and been very victorious. Um, this is what I'm, this is what I'm embracing. And, you know, for all that time and for what I do now, for as long as I've been doing it, helping people is a passion. It's, it's, it's not work, you know. It's how we grow in life, helping others, you know. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm on the other side of things. And today, it, you know, today was that day. Today was that day that the body said, hey, you know what? I'm ready to re-engage back into life. Okay, so I basically, let me show you this. I basically have kind of like been raising or browning. Those are the neck bones for my black beans and neck bones. So now I'm going to put water. Make sure I got this right. I'm gonna put water into the pot. This is my makeshift camera holder. It's still not right. Anyway, let's see here. Okay, there we go. Uh, water in there. So they boil up and get nice and tender, so they just pull off the bone. Uh, I haven't, I haven't been in the gym in the way of scheduled training because the body is like, no, we're not ready for that yet. So I'm listening to it and respecting it. It feels weird, but you know, I'm doing, I'm doing stretching. Um, you know, my stretching is still needed because I'm on my feet all day and the body tightens up. But uh, you know, I'm doing other small movements to keep certain areas from atrophying, if you will. Atrophying, getting weak, getting soft and starting to draw and pull in, which is, you know, which is what the body does when when you don't move around. When you don't move around, muscles shorten. When you don't move around, the circulation in the body drops, you know? So this is why your energy is gonna feel kinda of, uh, uh. So, but in my case, in a bodybuilder's case, that time that we take off after a show, we don't know how long it's gonna take for the body to say, okay, I'm ready to re-engage. Um, and this is where the bodybuilder really becomes smart and wise by listening to that voice. Because at that point, after the show, I feel is where the body's gonna do some major growing. If you take care of it right, let it rest, let it tell you when it's ready to come back to the gym. That time from being on stage and the time you come back into everything, you've grown some, you've grown. You've grown some muscle, you, you've, you, you've allowed the body to relax, and which is where the body gets its best growth, is when it's relaxed. It doesn't grow good when it's under stress, and this is what we do pre-contest. It's deeply under stress, which is why it's called in condition. Um, so, again, me coming out of it and being out of it, I think that's why it took longer, because it's actually a completion, <laughs> the end of the show, if you will. <laughs> you know. So we'll also turn the neck bones up a little higher so they come to a boil. Um, 
and you know boil simmer so by the time they're pretty much tender put them into the beans that's done so you know the next part of life i i see i see something i can't really identify I can't really say what it is, but I know it's there because I do feel it. And the fact that all this room has been made by, you know, bodybuilding being complete, which frees up a lot of my life, and that the inside, the soul and spirit have been cleared, it means it's ready for the next phase, whatever the next phase is. I know it will be something, again, that extends myself even further to help more people more people that's the thing let's get the word out get the word out get the energy out because a lot of people out there they need to the help you know this is why this is why a lot of us do what we do, and I'm talking about all the personal trainers. And I'm also the personal trainers that are so compassionate that every now and then a client will affect their life because they're a part of their life. Uh, but again, as trainers, we have to uh, get better with not allowing our clients to affect our life which is a strength, it's a strength. And it's not saying, you know, don't, don't care, don't give a shit. I'm not saying that, but we have to be good. You know, we have to be, um, you know, we have to be good with our terrain. Our terrain is our clients, our terrain is our, our personal training. And, you know, different people, so, so many times a day, you gotta wear a lot of different hats uh, and, and get good at it. You gotta get good at it, be good at it, because you wanna be good at it, because this is, you know, this is what keeps them coming back. You know, when a person knows that they're being helped by a person that actually loves what they do and is gonna take the time and be patient, it means a lot, it creates more. So that's the thing, you know? Um, help them one by one if that's what it takes, you know? And then at one point, help them in masses. Uh, don't worry, I'm not serving Kool-Aid. <laughs> anyway, um, it feels good to talk. It feels good to, uh, to communicate, uh, you know, this thing that I believe in, you know, helping mankind for the good of mankind. You know, there's, there's something to that. And with everything going on, with everything going on around us, you know, there is no time to be selfish. There really isn't. With all the stuff, with all the shit that's going on, yes, we all, each one of us, each one self-individual needs to take care of self first so we can help others. We don't put ourselves last because we put ourselves last. At one point, we become resentful to ourselves and why would you want to do that? You wouldn't do that to a friend, right? So be your best friend. Uh, be the first friend. Take care of self first. Keep, keep self strong. Keep self connected. Keep self in a belief that, um, that creates something greater than you. And that's helping people. Uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the analogies that I use, hope I'm using the right word, is I feel a human being is like a redwood tree, okay? A redwood tree has been in the ground for hundreds and hundreds of years, and if you've ever been to the sequoias or any place like that to where you can see these, these redwoods, the diameter of the tree itself, it's like you need to take an Uber to get around it. And then when you look up, it's like it goes forever. And then it gives off something that we need. Life is the same way. We should grow strong and healthy 
to create this energy that gives off an energy that helps everything outside of it, like a rippling effect, but all in a good sense. All the stuff happening around us, all the stuff going on, and I'm not gonna label it because why add pressure? <laughs> you know, it's be aware, stay aware, be conscious, stay conscious, believe in being conscious, believe in being aware. It'll help. And you can help others. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess that's all I got. I'm gonna finish cooking, get this healthy food on. Um, I know that I've helped because I believe in what I talk about. And what I talk about is what has helped me come through. And, you know, from the dark, wet and cold to the divine light, it's all possible. But you got to pay attention to self first to see it, then give it. Peace out until next time.